Hey, welcome back to the chair builds. Uh, this video, I'm going to show you how to easily remove uh, the carb of a GL 1100 Honda, like this one over here. Uh, and the quickest way to do that, uh, I've been taking this carb off as I've been building this bike uh, many, many times. These carbs are really hard to work on and they can have lots of issues. There's lots of moving parts and channels and things. So if you get one of these bikes, you are bound bound to get have to get these carbs off at some point and maybe even several times in a row uh, for adjustments or things that break or maybe things that you didn't mount correctly like I have had all of those things so that's today's video um, how to get the carb off quick and easy I've already taken off the side guards the some of them have side guards here like this one has they are gone you can leave them, but um, it's just working on the bike, like on the uh, valves. I still have to do that, the timing belt and the carbs. It's easiest to take them off until you've got everything dialed in and then put those back, those crash bars. Uh, there is some, are some other pieces over here, like um, uh, for decoration kind of purposes, uh, like small um, uh, chrome caps over here and one over here as well. Same on the other side, I've taken those off already. Um, and I've taken the cap from the fuel filter or fuel pump over here. I've taken that off as well. But this is the raw material what we're working with. So you don't need a lot of tools. Um, you just need some patience and yeah, dive into it. So that's what we're going to do. So there's a few things uh, that we'll need to get loose. Uh, there's these intake boots over here, and they are. We've got two bolts over here and here. Um, which need to be removed. Now, it's crucial. Um, underneath here is an O-ring. Now, as soon as you take these off, make sure the O-ring doesn't disappear into the engine. So that's something to take care of. Also, uh, before you do this, and if this carb hasn't been taken off for a long time, just PB Blast or WD-40 or do some sort of lubing Lube. yeah. uh, to get all these bolts nice and easy and nice and uh easy to open and close that will be a wise thing to do and these intake boots are when you put everything back together it'd be smart to heat these up with like a, a heat gun or something uh, it will make it easier to put these back on but that's for later use so these are carbs um, one and three the other ones are two and four try to keep everything separated so everything you take off from carb number one, you keep that separate from carb number three, because all these things are meant to be on this carb only. So be uh, extra careful with that. Um, you can drain the fuel right now, because there's fuel in these float balls right now. You can actually drain these right now. It, they're, it's pretty hard to reach, but if you get like a, a small uh, cup or something, uh, you can squeeze that underneath here, drain the fuel, um, but it's not necessary. I don't do that anymore. I did that in the beginning, but I don't do that anymore. Um, so you can do that. And let's get stuck in, I guess. So the first thing I'm going to do is take off the air filter over here. So this is the air filter, which sits over here, and that's connected to the car. So that's the first thing you're going to have to take off. Obviously, the tank, of course. Um, there, You could leave the tank on it, but it, it's... A lot easier to work with the the fake tank uh, off the bike it's not hard to do so I always do that remove the air filter box uh, and remove you have to take this one apart so this line I don't know if you can see that on camera no you can't Let me show you like that so here's that line that goes over up into the air box over there so here is the air box and you can just undo this sometimes it's really rusted but I've taken it off a lot of times and it's quite easy to do and then you take off the cap like that this is the actual filter which comes off quite easily and this is the part that holds the um, 
the air filter down into the onto the carb actually. Now I'm going to use my Ryobi uh, tool here, and I actually really like it. I have to put this in reverse. And this is a 10 millimeter bolt. And you take that out, put it away. Now, next thing is to have to undo this screw over here, which is a, there should be a clamp on there like this. Undo that. And it should be fairly easy. Now this is like an overflow tube. It doesn't really do anything. I guess where is, when there's like moisture getting in there or something like that. Fuel maybe, I don't know. gets rid of it as you can see it just runs down over here and just underneath the bike to that clip over there so it's doesn't you don't need it to make your engine run but there it is so that one's loose and there's another tube over here which is a breather hose for the engine and that's up here with these clips and also that comes loose pretty easily. So the airbox is now loose. We should be able to wiggle that out. There it goes. Now what I've been doing is kind of putting everything in reverse order. Kind of back together. Is the hole so I like that and I could just put this away so keep it nice and together now there is a rubber over here which is pretty important to make a good seal don't forget that and there is the carb from the top yep um, next up, we're going to loosen these ones, take them out, and keep them separate for each carb. Quick and easy. To the other side. Okay. So these uh, these bolts are all the same for it uh, for each of the carbs. So you can uh, put them all together; it doesn't matter. There are other parts that are more crucial and dedicated to a single carb, but these uh, these bolts aren't. Okay, so goes away. Uh, now check if the fuel is off. It's off. We're good. Because we need to remove the fuel line from the carb. And usually I do it on this side, so on the pump side. Because the other part is really hard to reach. Especially if you put it back together. I've actually just replaced this uh, fuel line. <laughs> oh, it's so hard to get off. So, just some WD-40 to make it go a bit easier. 
There it goes. So a few lines off. There's always some spillage. Uh, well, what about spillage? Spillage. Always, usually. And actually, this is a good point to say that you've got to have like four of these pieces of cloth or uh, paper. So four pieces at the ready because you're going to stick those in here to prevent stuff falling in. But these pieces here, I'm just going to kind of get rid of the fuel. So, airbox is off, fuel is off. These are loosened. Next, we're going to loosen these uh, boots. So, we're going to release these boots over here. You just need a screwdriver to do that. Till they're nice and loose. And you do it for all four sides. And usually go as far as that that thread has gone into that uh, bolt part. So like like this. So you can't see it. That's usually enough. Have I done it with this one? No, I haven't. All right. While we're on this side, we are going to loosen this screw, which is the choke cable. Just loosen it, don't don't remove it. And as you can see, you can quite easily get that cable loose and just get it out of the way because you need all the room you can get. The other thing we're gonna loosen while we're here, here are these two screws, if you can reach them properly. Don't take them out, just loosen them. All right. So I've loosened this one, loosened this one over here. Now we're going to do that one over there. Well, I have to, I can't really reach it properly. So we're going to do that maybe later. Uh, we're going to do it later when we're going to move the car back and forth. Because you really need to get your, you really need to get a good grip on that bolt. Otherwise you're going to strip it. So next is this little vacuum hose. Undo it, get it out of the way. Uh, we're gonna do the other side. We'll loose, loosen these intake boots. And actually, just you could take this out of the way as well. And when the carb is off, this is also a good time to. Replace uh, fuel lines, maybe replace the fuel filter, which is back here. It's really hard to reach. You can never replace that with the carbon. It's just impossible. And also you can reach the thermostat over here as soon as the carb is out. You can reach um, the pipes for the coolant that are over here with gaskets and O-rings. You can reach the thermal switches which are down there as well all right so these are loosened these are loosened and next up are the boots we're going to take these off now so what you do is you kind of twist them twist them and turn them back or uh, what i do i tilt them kind of so and beware of those those o-rings there just keep your eye on it there it goes and there's a reason why I do that because it's already loose now so it's gone backwards and the reason I do that is because this thing has a little nick over here and it's kind of already this one's already damaged because there's a so that little tab over there that's where this goes and as you can see this is already damaged because of the wiggling so I just I kind of tilt it forward so it comes loose and then I can pull it back but that seems to work so this is the o-ring you want to be careful with don't drop it in there 
So I'm going to get a rag straight away and fill that hole. So stick that in there, like so. Safe. And keep this boot on the side where it came from. So I put it on the floor, like there. Put the other one there, so I know where it came from. All right, I'm going to do this one as well. So tilt it. I pull, pull the back away. There it goes. And then you can go left and right. And there it is. O-ring is still there. Put it on the floor. Stick in the rack. Safe. Now you can try and wiggle these out. The more space you get, the easier it's going to be. So spark plugs well out of the way. We're getting some room here. We're going to go to the other side now. So same procedure. Just kind of pull the bottom towards you. Oh, I'm going to show you what happens. Look. That's the O-ring that came from this this intake boot, and it's like hanging over here. So that's that's what happens. Um, yeah, just keep an eye on that. I'm just going to take that away. Get a rag because I don't want to damage it either. So put the rag in there. There we go. Okay, there we go. So I'm, I'm pulling it this way. Yeah, it's loose under top, left and right. There it goes. All right. So we can now move the carb back and forth which helps to get these off. So now we want to loosen that bolt and that one over there. So we're just going to move the entire car body that way, like so. So now you can reach it a lot easier. So I can reach it really good. There it goes. And when you've when this carb's been sitting for a long time, this is going to be harder. And I've had that, so I've actually had to use a... How do you call that? The hammer thingy to get them loose. All right. Well, there's a little tray up here. So, for the gas overflow, that's where I put the screws while I'm doing this and keep everything separated so I'll just work on one carb make sure it loose and then do the other so you don't get mixed up I'm also gonna move these spark plug wires while we're here because we've got more room all right so that's out of the way we're getting somewhere. Uh, just move the carb. The only thing it's holding right now are the throttle cable and yeah, the throttle cable basically. It's the only two ones. So there's a push and a pull, of course. So everything's out now, so I'm just going to move it that way. The carp is now loose in the bike, and it's just a matter of wiggling it. 
and I've I've never really found the proper way but usually I stand up I haven't I've forgotten anything or I haven't I kind of tilt it oh I've gone too far I think tilt it somewhat and now you see why you need all that room at the back there it goes and then you take it out now if those if these caps were here that will be really hard to do but that is the car about and this is the throttle assembly so one cable goes over here into that notch and one cable goes through this this part underneath over there and these are actually the hardest part of this assembly to get these back in but that's how you do it So that's how you take out the carb of the GL 1100. Uh, at least that's the way I do it, and I think it's the quickest way. Um, yeah, it's just uh, it's a bit cumbersome, and it's just a really big carb, basically. So I hope you enjoyed that small video. Uh, I hope it helps you uh, when you work on a bike like this. Um, putting it back together is basically everything I did in reverse order. Uh, I may show you that at some point as well but for now i want to leave it here if you like my channel please subscribe um uh, you can also find me on socials like uh, instagram and facebook um subscribe if you haven't already please leave a comment i uh, really like it if you have any questions please uh, throw them at me go to my web shop if you want some merch uh, like hats and cool stuff like that and i just want to thank you for watching and uh, see you in the next video cheers